Hello and welcome to an introduction to drawing in CAD presented by Dave Walker for the Model Aviation Magazine. Before we do any drawing, I would like to go over the basics of any CAD environment. I am using DevCAD, but the principle should be the same no matter which CAD program you choose to use. We have some formatting tools, zoom tools, snap tools, which I will go over in detail later, some drawing tools, editing tools, our input area, and this is our drawing area. Also note that we can have multiple drawings open at the same time. In addition to DevCAD, I would like to show you another 2D CAD program, AutoCAD. As you can see, it is very similar in that we have our formatting tools, our zoom tools, snap tools. We also have our drawing tools, our editing tools, and our input area. Another program that modelers like to use is SketchUp. It is a 3D modeling program as opposed to a 2D drawing program. SketchUp lends itself more to sheet foam construction than the typical balsa build. Before we start a drawing, we will need to create a new file. You can do this either by selecting the new drawing icon or going to File, New Drawing. This will open a dialog box. Choose which units you want to work with and choose your scale. Most of the time this will be one to one. For this drawing exercise, we can just click OK as we are not interested in the drawing size or border. Before using the CAD program for the first time, I like to set up my environment. For this particular CAD program, the cursor is too large for my liking. To change the size, go to Tools, Options, then Mouse Cursor and Grips. I like to set mine to 75. You can also explore the other options. Another popular variable that some folks like to change is the drawing background color. Once you have explored these options and set them to your liking, click on OK. Another item I like to customize are the toolbars. The toolbars take away from the drawing space, so I like to limit them to the ones that I use. To show or hide a particular toolbar, go to View, Toolbars, then check or uncheck the ones that you want. You can always come back and change this depending on what stage of the drawing you are working on. Within each toolbar, you can also customize which tools are displayed. Click on the Customize button in each toolbar to add or remove tools. For example, the Drawing Toolbar. I select only the tools that I use most often. You can add tools by selecting from the available list and clicking on Add. Note, you will need to click on the current list where you want the new tool to be added. Conversely, you can remove tools by selecting a tool under Current and clicking on Remove. Click on Close when done. A very important concept in CAD is Snaps. This allows you to start a drawing element at an exact location. There are two snap toolbars. There is one at the bottom that I usually don't change much, but one of the important ones in this toolbar is the polar snap. It will snap at predefined degrees. This is very useful to us in making exact horizontal and vertical lines. It is very useful to select the various snaps from the top toolbar depending on which ones you want to use. Having too many on will make it difficult to choose the proper snap point. Here I chose the midline snap. Notice how the cursor tells us we're at the center of the line. Another commonly used snap is the endpoint snap. It finds the end of a line. Now that we have our environment set the way we like it, it is time to start drawing. We will start with something rather simple, a servo. We will need one of these for our airplane anyway, so why not start with that? Before I draw anything in CAD, I like to start with a pencil sketch with the dimensions of the object. I took the dimensions with an inexpensive caliper, but a ruler with a resolution of at least a 32nd of an inch would also be fine. I will cover layers later, but for now we will be drawing in layer 0, as any time you create a drawing to be used in another drawing, it is best to create it in layer 0. A quick word about the tools. Notice that each tool has one or more dots. This tells us how many points we need to enter and where they are to be placed. For example, the rectangle tool shows us that we need a corner and an opposite corner. After selecting the rectangle tool, click anywhere in the drawing space to create the lower left corner. Now move the cursor to the upper right and type in the measurement of the servo in the command bar. 
Notice that it is asking for the opposite corner and it shows you what you typed. In DevCAD, I needed to put the ampersand before the first number to tell the CAD program that the next corner is relative to the first. Note that for numbers less than 1, we need the leading edge 0. Now press Enter. The command area shows you that the rectangle was inserted successfully. Also note that we created a very precise object without having to be precise with our mouse movements. The rectangle we just drew may be really small, so click on the Zoom Extend button to fill the drawing area with our rectangle. The Zoom Extend will fill the screen with your drawing no matter the drawing size. Now click on the Zoom Out button so that the servo is a bit smaller. You can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now is a good time to save our drawing and give it a name. Choose File, Save As. I have a separate folder for parts that I keep all my parts in. We will give it a name, let's call it Servos. And click on Save. As this is the top of the servo, we'll add the output shaft next. We already measured from the center of the output shaft to the edge of the servo case. This is where we will put the center of the circle that will be the output shaft. We're going to create a temporary line with the end of the line where the center of the circle will go. We will be using a snap for this, so make sure only the midpoint snap is selected and all other snaps are off. Select the line tool. Hover over the end of the case. Notice that the cursor changes to the midpoint snap. Click here and move the cursor over to the right. Enter in the measurement. Note, I just moved the cursor down here to highlight the command line. You will not need to do this. Click on Enter, then Escape on the keyboard. Now we have the center of the output shaft. To draw the output shaft, select the Circle tool. Notice that we have a few circle tools to choose from. Select the two-point circle with center point. Also, select the endpoint snap. You can turn off the midpoint snap if you want. In the command area, we have some hints about the circle tool. It is asking us to select the center point of the circle and tells us it is looking for the radius. Click the cursor to the end of the temporary line we just drew. Notice it snaps to the end point. Click here and move the cursor away from the center. Enter the radius and press return. Now delete the temporary line by clicking on it and pressing delete on the keyboard. Using what you've learned so far, create one of the mounting tabs for the servo. Notice that we are not interested in creating every detail of the servo, just the parts that are important when we were checking for fit when using the drawings in our plans. Now is a good time to introduce an editing tool called Trim. Notice that this line extends further than we would like. We can trim it to end where we want. Select the Trim tool. The command area is asking you to select the cutting object. This is where we want our trim line to end. We can select one or more drawing objects. Here we will select this line. Now press Return. Our selected object turns to a dotted line and the command area is asking us what we want to trim. Click on the part of the line we want to remove. The line is now trimmed. We could draw the other tab or we could take advantage of the computer and copy the one we drew. Select the mounting tab part of the servo by drawing a box around the drawing object. To draw the select box, click on the upper left where you want to select, then move the cursor to the other corner and click. The drawing elements are now selected. Now press Ctrl C on the keyboard to copy or you can go to Edit and then Copy from the menu bar. Move the cursor close to where you want the object and press Ctrl V on the keyboard to paste. Select all the elements of the tab that you just copied and select the mirror tool. Notice how the selected objects change to a dotted line. This tells you what elements are going to be changed by the tool that we selected. Select an endpoint of the mounting tab and click. Move the cursor to the other end of the mounting tab and click. The command line is now asking us if we want to copy the new element. If we just press return, it will accept the response that is in the parentheses. In this case, no. 
Press enter or N on the keyboard as we are only interested in keeping one object, not both. Let's move the object that we just mirrored. Select all the elements in the object, choose the move tool, make sure that our multi-point snap is selected, click on the one corner, drag it over to the other corner of servo till it centers. Now we have a complete servo case. Using what you've learned, create the other two views of the servo. Remember, you can use temporary lines when needed, and you can use the view of the first drawing as a basis for the other views. The servo arm is a great place to use something called a polar array. For example, we have a servo arm with four segments. We could draw all four separately, or we could draw one arm and duplicate in a circular fashion. First draw one segment of the servo arm, then select all the elements and click on Polar Array. You can experiment with the various options, but for this demonstration we need four items filling in 360 degrees and we want to rotate the items as they are created. Let's select the point that is the center of rotation. Notice that we get a small preview of what the final product will look like. If this meets our requirements, click on OK. If not, modify accordingly. We don't need the lines in the center that were created by the Array tool. Select and delete them. Also clean up these extra lines by using the Trim tool. The intersections of the segments are 90 degrees in our drawing. We can clean that up a little bit by adding a fillet. Create the fillet, select the fillet tool. It is prompting us what type of fillet. We want a radius fillet, so press R and return. It is now prompting us for the radius of the fillet, with 5 being the default. As 5 is much too large, we enter 0.0625, or 16th of an inch, and press return. Now click on the first line. We are then prompted to select the second line. The fillet has been created. Create the other three fillets. We can now just select the first and second segments. The tool remembers the last option. In order to use these objects in future drawings, we could just copy and paste into our new drawing but that would not allow us to take full advantage of something called blocks, also known as groups. There are a few ways to create blocks, but I like to keep all like objects, servos for example, in their own drawing. A drawing can have multiple blocks, so why not take advantage of that? Notice how when we click on an object, it only selects the individual drawing objects. Highlight all the elements in one of the views of the servo, the side view in this example. Click on the Create Block tool. Give the block a name that will make sense. You do not have to, but it is best if you pick a base point. This is to be used later when inserting a block into a drawing. Click on the base point. It will take you back to your drawing. When selecting a base point, I like to choose a spot on the object that I can use to align on other parts of the drawing. Now when we select the block, it is a single object that we can use in future drawings. The advantage of this will become apparent as we progress with drawing a set of plans. To recap what we've learned, we learned to set the program so that it is comfortable for us to use. We learned about the tips that the drawing tools provide. We learned to use the command area for hints of what to do next. We learned that we can make very precise drawings without having to be precise with our mouse movements. We learned that we can use temporary lines to aid in the placement of objects within our drawing. We learned how to edit drawing elements and create fillets. We learned how to mirror. We learned how to move multiple drawing elements. We learned about arrays, specifically polar arrays, and we learned how to create blocks to be used in future drawings. Well, that was a lot to absorb. The good thing is that with the skills presented here, you have, with a few small exceptions, just about everything you need to make a good basic CAD drawing. Until the next video, on working with a 3-view, why not practice these skills by making a motor or engine, or some hardware to be used in future drawings.